Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can download and install and use the open source version of Qt on your Ubuntu operating system. So let's start with the installation first. So just open your favorite browser and search for Qt and the first link which will appear here will be from Qt.io. So just click on this uh, official link. Now here you have few options. So on the top, you will be able to see try or download Qt. So just click on this download try button. And Qt have two different versions. They have the commercial version and they also have the open source version. So right now we are on the commercial version page. You can see, you can also see you have this open source user version. So we are going to go to the open source link. So just click on go to open source. And here you will be able to see the open source development page for Qt. So here if you want, you can read all this information and go down. And at the very bottom, you will be able to see this button which says download the Qt online installer. So click on that and then you have the option to download Qt for Mac OS, Windows and Linux. We are on Linux, so we are going to choose Linux here and then click on uh, Qt online installer for Linux, which is going to download this Qt run file, right? So once this uh, Qt dot run file is downloaded, let me open the terminal. You can open the terminal by pressing Control Alt T on your Ubuntu operating system or just go to the applications and then click on terminal here. So once you are on the terminal, we are going to CD into our downloads folder. And here we can see that this Qt unified dot run file is available. First of all, in order to execute this file, we need to change the permission of this file. So just write uh, chmod plus x and the name of the file, which is Qt unified blah, blah, blah dot run file. So just write Qt and then press uh, tab key on your keyboard and then it's going to opto complete the file name and then press enter. So the execute permission is granted to this file. Now we can run this file. So just write dot forward slash and the name of the file, which is Qt and then just run it. Now, if you see these kind of errors, it says error while loading shared libraries. That means some dependencies are unmet on your Ubuntu operating system for the installation of Qt. So in order to uh, solve this, the easiest way is, first of all, you need to uh, see which package is uh, complaining. So in my case, there is this libxcb package, uh, which is complaining, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just write uh, apt cache. So first of all, I will uh, search for this package if it's available. So apt cache search and then the name of the package. I will just uh, copy until here. I don't want to copy this dot so dot uh, zero here. So copy and paste it here and then search for this package. And I can see there are two packages which are available to install. And we are going to install the first one because other one have the flag dev, right? So we are going to install this package to solve this problem. So now just write sudo apt install and then you can even write reinstall so if the older version of package is available it will be reinstalled right so reinstall and then the name of the package which is this one and it came when we search for this package right so just write the name of this package and then press enter and uh, it says uh, reinstall so yeah for reinstall i should have given two hyphens here instead of one, right? And then press enter. And now this package will be installed. 
So let's wait for the package to be installed. And once this package is installed, we can clear the terminal. I was using some Jenkins uh, installation earlier, so it's saying failed, but it's related to Jenkins. But this package is installed successfully, so right? So I'm going to clear the terminal and then try to run this file once again. So dot forward slash qt unified dot run file. Press enter and now the installation starts, right? So now uh, in order to install qt from the official website, you need to have a qt account. So I already have a qt account. If you don't have it, you can create this qt account simply by just clicking on sign up and the procedure is really simple right so once you are logged in with your account uh, you can agree with these license terms and conditions so i will click on i have read and agreed on these terms and conditions enter your company name or business name so just uh, write that here and then i can just uh, check this checkbox which says I'm an individual and do not use QT for any company, right? Click on next and then welcome to uh, open source QT setup. We can click on next here. And then after some time, it says uh, help us improve QT and QT creator. And then it says help us improve uh, by enabling sending uh, the statistics. I don't want to do this, so I will check this radio button which says disable sending statistics right click on next and then you have all these options so at this point i want to uh, install qt using qt design studio so i will check this checkbox and i want to use qt for desktop development if you want to use qt for uh, mobile development you can also choose this option but for now i just want to use qt for desktop development so i will choose this option you can also choose both of them if you want, right? Then click on next and then click on this uh, checkbox, which means uh, you can install CMake uh, using the CMake license agreement. Click on next and then click on install, which is going to start the download of all the essential files. And then it's going to start the installation. So just wait for some time until this process is finished. So once the process of Qt installation is finished, you can see uh, this kind of window which says launch Qt creator, open Qt design studio, readme file, and you can even launch the Qt uh, design studio. So I'm going to check this checkbox and then uncheck the readme file here, which is going to launch Qt creator and Qt design studio. I'm going to click on finish here which means that the installation of Qt is finished and you can see the Qt Design Studio is uh, uh, started. So for now, I'm going to close this Qt Designer Studio and then you can see this Qt Creator here. Let me close this also. You can open this Qt uh, Creator and Qt Designer at any time by searching for them. So just search for Qt and then you can see this Qt Creator you will also see the Qt designer. So let me open the Qt creator from here. Once Qt creator is open, let's try to create a very simple widget application using Qt creator. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on create project button here. And then you have many options here to create many different applications, right? See so here you have Qt widget application, console, quick application, Qt quick application, compat. And then you also have the option to create uh, the Qt applications using Python. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the first option here, which is uh, application Qt. And then I'm going to create a Qt widget application and then click on choose and then give the name of your project. So I'm going to name my project as my first Qt project for example and then click on next this will be the location by the way where your Qt project will be saved which is your home folder click on next here you can choose the build system 
So generally when I develop a Qt widget application, I choose uh, QMake. You can also choose CMake for building your applications, right? Click on next. These are the default uh, header and CPP files which will be created. So if you want to change the name of these headers and CPP files, uh, you can change them here for the first time. I just want to create the hello world project. So I will leave everything as default and then click on next. The language uh, you can choose from here if you want some translation, but I don't want to do that. But if you want to create uh, some kind of uh, translation for your Qt application, you can choose those languages here. So let's say I will choose uh, English UK from here. And you can see there is this translation file which is created for me for this uh, English GB, right? Click on next. This will be the development kit, which is desktop Qt 6.5.1 at the time of making this video. And then I'm going to click on next here. So at this um, window, you can choose the version control. Generally, you can choose uh, from uh, Git or SVN or any other version control system. For now, I don't want to choose any version control here. So I will just click on none. But if you want to push your code to a GitHub or any other code repository, you can choose Git, uh, which will enable you to just uh, push your codes somewhere in some repository, right? Click on finish, which is going to create this file, right? So once you have created your uh, project, it will look like this. So this project contains .pro file which is essentially the file where you define all the header, CPP, UI files of your project. Then you have header files. By default, it creates this win main window.h file. Then you have the main.cpp file and main window.cpp file. And then you have uh, this uh, translation file, which we have created, right? You also have this forms, uh, folder where you have this main window.ui. So when you click on this main window.ui, you will see that you are in the designer view of your application. By default, it's blank here, right? But you can add some components. So for example, I can add a label here, just search for the label and then drag and drop that label here. You can change the object name of your uh, label, for example, or you can change many properties related to uh, your component on the right hand side. So for example, I want to remove this text label text from uh, this label. So I can just uh, move down and there is this text uh, property here. So I can just remove this text from here and this label has no text, for example, right? I can also search for push button. So I'm going to just drag and drop this push button here. I can resize this push button from here. And then once again, you can change the property of this push button. So select this push button, and then you have the object name. So object name is the name using which you can reference your visual component, right? So here, let's change the text for this push button. So I'm going to just go here and then I will just say, click uh, me, for example, and the text is changed, right? Now let's say that when I push this push button, we want to change some text or we want to uh, show some text in this label. In order to add some listener to this button, I can just right click on uh, this button and then click on go to slot. And then we have uh, many actions here, right? I'm going to choose clicked option. So when this button is clicked, I want to perform something, right? I'm going to click on OK here. And then this method is created in my main window.cpp file. So here, as I mentioned, I want to show something when this button is clicked. So this uh, label object ID is label, right? 
So we want to uh, use this label object ID in order to uh, show uh, the text, right? So I can just write UI, then I can reference this uh, label by just using its object ID, which is label. And then I can just call a set text uh, method here. So let me just call the set text and you can observe that at every point I have the IntelliSense, right? So for example, I can just write hello world here and then you can save your code. So I'm going to just press control S to save my code. Now let's build our code and let's run it. So for building and running our code, you have this uh, build project button and run project button. So let's build it first. So just click on this hammer icon and then click on save all, which is going to start building. You can see the progress of build here. So now I can see uh, this kind of error, which says uh, user bin LD cannot find this flag here, right? I don't see this flag directly uh, here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to open my terminal, open a new terminal, and then I'm going to install this. So I'm going to just write sudo apt update, and then give my password for Ubuntu. And once that command is successful, let me clear the terminal and then give this command. I'm going to give you this command in the description of this video, which is apt uh, install libgl1-mesa-dev, press enter, and then press Y to install it. And once that command is finished, I can go once again to my Qt creator and then click on build again. And this time you can see my build is successful. And then I can run this project by clicking on the run button and my project is running now. So I will click on click me, which prints hello world on my label, right? So this is how you can install Qt and Qt designer on your Ubuntu operating system and create a very simple Qt widget application. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.